All right, welcome to Witch Place Radio. I'm here with a guest who is uh, new to the podcast, but definitely not new to the local music scene. I mean, I think I've, I've listened to various uh, projects that, that you've been in over the years, and uh, there's obviously a reason we're here today is to talk about an exciting new release that's coming out um, the day people hear this, this episode. So I think the best way to start this off is if you want to introduce yourself and give a bit of background about what it is you do as an artist, and then we can kind of get into the, the release and what's going on now. Sure. Uh, my name's Carrie Latimer. I'm in a band called Leaf Rapids, um, and Leaf Rapids kind of formed out of uh, another old band called Nathan that I was in years ago, and I've been in Winnipeg. I moved here from Alberta and BC, geez, like over 30 years ago, I think, so I call okay. myself a Winnipegger. I love I think that here. counts. I think you've had enough uh, tenure in Winnipeg that it counts, yeah, yeah. Yeah, how many years is it before you become a full-fledged Winnipegger? <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> you probably need a few decades at least, and you're there. I think you're there. Yeah, right on. <laughs> um, yeah, I love it here. I would probably not be a musician if not for the generosity and uh, um, just the collaborative nature of Winnipeg musicians. It's different than anywhere else I've lived. For sure. And I think that you play a style of music, too, that, that is very, has a very strong community um, here in Winnipeg and across Manitoba, really. I mean, I feel like anything within sort of the larger folk umbrella had a roots Americana, folk, bluegrass, blues, all, all of that stuff. It really has a very strong following and very strong just roster of, of musicians uh, here in the city. Yeah, big roster of musicians and huge supporters in the community, house concerts and yeah. uh and funding is just unbelie unbelievable. So Leaf Rapids, uh, how long has that actually been uh, an, an active unit? Because, I mean, I, I remember being from Nathan. I, I saw Nathan live a few times. I have a few of the albums. Leaf Rapids, I knew of your existence. I've heard a few songs here and there. But I really only got up to speed uh, in a big way, sort of preparing for this interview. So what is the timeline um, of Leaf Rapids as an entity? Uh, hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the exact year. I'm not one of those people who remembers the years. Right, right. Uh, um, but yeah, I mean, let's say 2005, I think maybe we put out. Oh, wait, geez, is it even that? No, probably 2015. Um, okay. Anyway, after Nathan busted up, we were uh, approached by Steve Dawson from Black Ken Music um, if we wanted to be on his label and he asked us if we had some songs ready um, and we can make a new project. And we said, yes, we do have some songs ready and uh, immediately started writing songs and <laughs> went to Nashville and recorded a record with him. Um, it was a good kick in the butt to get another project going. Cause we, we wanted to keep going and yeah, Shelly in the meantime, Shelly Marshall's got her doctorate um, in, in nursing and she's doing a lot of really good work in the, forming public policy and cool. uh, Damon's got kids and so yeah people weren't touring as much so so Leaf Rapids has been around for 10 years now I guess that's a pretty good pretty good run already and this is your I guess your third record coming up yeah this is our third this is the most special because we have Chris Dunn and Joanna Miller just fully collaborating in the record and it's a it's a four-piece unit now instead of a we were doing it as a duo for a while Devin and yeah. I and so it is, does the, I mean, obviously, you know, despite doing it as a duo before this, you've had all kinds of collaborators who have worked on the previous albums and worked with you before, uh, including some familiar names and faces, I'm sure, to people who have seen your other, your other projects uh, over the years. But is the sound, do you feel like the sound has changed since you've sort of officially made it a four piece? Is there sort of a notable, notable difference to you? Uh, or is it still just a continuation of the same, the same thing? I feel like it's changed a lot. Um... I think it's a really gelled uh, sound. It has a yeah, it has it has a a more developed sound definitely, and uh, you can hear everybody's personalities. I think on this record, and it feels uh, I feel like on the last couple of Leaf Rapids records, we we were sort of drifting around and, and searching for sounds, and it wasn't very cohesive and. Uh, and we had we did have a lot of guests and and maybe it's not a terrible thing that it wasn't cohesive because we kind of let every song take their own direction but um i do love the uh the sound of the band in this it's it feels really i don't know kind of special it's not about cool. me anymore so i like that <laughs> does that help with the just just sort of the um overall songwriting and everything too knowing that it's it's not just a duo with with extras it's actually like a, an established unit 
Yeah, it was a, well, it has, I had a bit of COVID brain just down in the dumps. Couldn't really, couldn't really find inspiring things to write about. And I was struggling. Uh, but, and then um, I just, I think I needed a kick in the butt. We had a deadline coming with Manitoba Film and Music. Uh, they were pretty much saying, record this record or give our funding back. And so we we booked some dates and then, and then luckily my brain kicked in and, and uh, yeah, so it, it was really nice recording it though. And like you said, the pressure felt like it was off because I knew that we just had to do our thing and we didn't need to, I think I felt like we were trying to, to be bigger because it was just Devin and I, so we'd get Alexa. Yeah. Derek's to come and sing and we had slow leads and we were we were trying all these different things and having lots of guests and uh for this one it was just like okay we have our people and they're amazing and let's just play the songs and uh let the songs speak and yeah so it felt I think just even the process of being relaxed and and trusting everybody else uh just made it made made it work <laughs> How long have these uh, songs been in the works? I think I, I think I read that this was actually like recorded and everything last year, right? Yeah, in December, actually. So we booked two weeks in the studio and then we were going to mix after that. But actually after about a week and a day, like maybe six, six, yeah, six days, six or seven days, we were finished tracking and oh, cool. we didn't really, it kind of felt like, oh, we don't want to mess with this too much. Let's, let's start mixing. And so we, we didn't even use up all of our, our time we had allotted for tracking. And, um, we used a lot of sort of live off the floor sounds and, and it, uh, um, I totally veered away. <laughs> no, it's cool. It's around. cool. When did we do it? We did it in December. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and so like, I guess, I guess maybe a, a better way of rephrasing the question, um, is, uh, like how long have these songs been, been sort of, how long have you been working on these songs? And, and the reason I ask is because, you know, like you mentioned COVID, uh, you have a gas mask behind you in the background when we're talking here, <laughs> it's making me think of it. Um, how did the pandemic affect, did that affect sort of the, uh, the timeline for making this record? Or is this something that came to fruition sort of after COVID was petered out? Most of it was after I was working. I think there was one song called Starling to Starling that went through about 58 iterations <laughs> over the span of COVID. And it, it switched genres. It switched lyrics. Uh, yeah, it was all over the place. And I think I was just, I couldn't, yeah, I was I was trying to guide it. And then, uh, um. So a lot of the songs actually were written recently. Okay. Yeah, and I wrote um maybe I think I wrote Velvet Paintings maybe last summer because I sang it on the porch for some people and and uh like Corin Raymond was over for a barbecue and he's a songwriter I really love and respect. Yeah, great songwriter. Yeah. Yeah, and he uh he was I don't know he just gave me some very nice words about it so I got <laughs> I felt sort of like I had a pat on the back to keep going and yeah that that kind of kicked me into gear but yeah a lot of them were even a few of them were written the week before we got in the studio because i was starting to panic <laughs> well it sounds like you didn't need to panic it sounds like it worked out uh everything worked out better than you yeah. expect right i think you just said it i'm one of those people that if a deadline is set i will get it done <laughs> yeah with a bit of panic <laughs> right right well it helps right panic sometimes helps uh, helps to make yeah, it actually are you happen. like that too or are you an organized person no i uh like my day job is in journalism so everything i do is extremely tight deadlines and extremely panicked so yeah i definitely yeah. as for the moment like just go with it i think i think there's 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 you can develop an art to that i think um and making that work yeah. every time like i find i think i need that deadline maybe that's what it was over the pandemic there just wasn't <laughs> yeah there's nothing to work towards yeah floating around in this weird foggy waxy haze yeah yes yeah, for sure um this is a question everyone hates answering and i hate asking it but it's it's <laughs> i feel like these days everyone wants to pigeonhole every everyone's music into a, a certain category and there's so many now there's all these subcategories and genres that didn't exist 10 years ago or five years ago how do you define this i mean I, you know I, I feel like americana probably works but do you have sort of a more um precise way to to define what you do I like the Americana because it's it's not country. There's some, yeah. yeah, we've got some sort of old country sounds. Joanna Miller wrote an amazing kind of pop sound. Um, but when I 
I was dig I was playing around with Submit Hub. Have you ever tried or do you know about that? It's a, I don't think so, no. It's a it's a website where you can submit your songs for playlists and stuff. I'm oh, trying okay. to yeah, so there's Spotify playlists, there's blogs. I'm not sure what I think about it, but uh, when you hit the, what is my genre, <laughs> it brings up Americana and folk, indie folk, so I guess it's kind of in there. I like Canadiana, someone called us. <laughs> yeah, well, what, what do you think is the difference then between Canadiana and Americana? Because I can see how that could be a separate genre because, I mean, there is a difference, but what do you think is sort of the, is it the subject matter that, that maybe is a differentiator? I wonder, yeah, I, I wonder about that too. Maybe it's just because we don't like to be lumped in with Americans too much. <laughs> yeah, our whole, our whole culture is about not being American for sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, definitely roots. We definitely have a roots. Uh, and especially with this album, we we haven't, uh, we, we only have a couple, a few guests. We have some strings, Nathaniel, Felicity Tess is playing cello, and J.P. Peters, who produced the album, is actually playing uh, some beautiful violin. I didn't even know he could play violin, but he's wonderful. And uh, and then we have uh, keys from Jeff Hillhorse from Deep Dark Woods, who I, I love that band. And cool. uh, yeah, so he sent some tracks in. And th other than that, it's just it's just us. And so, and we let kind of, I guess, writing for this one, I wanted to give lots of space for Chris Dunn to do his thing on guitar too. So Cool, cool. <laughs> and he's got that rootsy country flavor to his playing. yeah but yeah it's definitely not a country record and you're not a country band but there's a little bit of that kind of sneaks in right yeah yeah did you hear the the um preview of the album? i did yeah yeah it yeah, sounds cool. great awesome. and one thing i wanted to ask you about the album actually is, is i kind of feel the way from the other stuff too but it definitely has kind of a um i don't know what the word is for it like almost like a dreamy vibe to it like it, the whole thing feels very um not not sleepy because sleepy sleepy seems bad but dreamlike it seems very kind of um like like it sort of lulls you into some kind of weird headspace in a good way if that makes sense i don't know how to explain it other than dreamy i guess is the way to do it is that something that that you hear in this music as well like a sort of a i wish i had a better word than dreamlike but that's that's what's coming to mind i love i love the word dreamlike i i think that's really i i'm uh i take that all as compliments yeah and even the weird putting you in a weird <laughs> headspace is good <laughs> putting you in any kind of headspace is nice um yeah i like that a lot it does it is kind of dreamy and now now i'm just thinking about that but yeah for sure and especially like in the woods with jp uh was so fun to to record with and I could go i would go in there when he was mixing and he just plays with the delay like he's using the delay knobs almost like an instrument and he was oh, taking cool. a sound and just stretching things and and uh doing like morphing things in the background and uh yeah and then i'd also hear like was that a fiddle part or i mean a violin <laughs> part just way back like i'd hear all these kind of really subtle things if i put my headphones on and i just loved the surprises he would bring and so he for sure added a an excellent dreamy quality, which which totally, yeah. He cool. he kind of like the fifth member of our band in that. Recording. Well, it's always interesting when you have someone who's producing it who can add that, who can turn the the studio into an instrument because it it definitely um it's a different way to to um you know complement the sounds that are on the album. Yeah, and yeah, and he def he doesn't overdo it. He knew exactly where to do it, and he kept us all so relaxed, and he didn't like dick around with sounds and because a lot of times i remember when i first started in studios it felt like a lot of it was them trying to find the right mic spot for the guitar and it seemed <laughs> to take so long but i would think i was more nervous then too so time worked differently in my mind but i remember it just being quite a nerve-wracking experience but maybe this one wasn't though just... a mixture of experience and a mixture of awesome jp is just yeah it was right and he's he's recorded with everyone i mean his his, his resume is, is crazy just the kind of wide range of, of different types of artists he's 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 had that he's worked with yeah he's got such good ears i actually met him through that middle of nowhere project i did yeah with, uh with rusty and he and jp mixed that one and i was like oh this guy's got some skills <laughs> Well, that I have that CD, and it, it, that was just a one-off, right? That was just like a one-time uh, recording thing. Yeah, yeah. We went into the woods for seven days and wrote nine songs and recorded them. <laughs> it was intense. Yeah, and that's like a, a definitely an all-star lineup of local roots 
uh, musicians too. It's crazy. Yeah, it was really, really fun. Cool. Um, with, with this, you know, I just thinking back about the, the dreamlike thing, I think maybe a better way to describe it, because I'm trying to find a way that makes me seem like I actually know what I'm talking about, <laughs> is that it's uh, maybe more, it, it's kind of absorbing. Like, I feel like from start to finish, it, it kind of, um, it kind of sucks you into listening. I, I think you mentioned headphones before, too. And I think it maybe seems like one of those records that, that lends itself to close listening on headphones rather than having it blasting on a stereo. If that makes sense, is that is that how you feel about it? Do you think it's something that is sort of um, meant for that intimate sort of listening? Yeah, I think I think you're right. I don't know if we intended to do that, but there's definitely like I think the way it starts too, it just feels like yeah, you're in someone's head, and uh, yeah, I like that. <laughs> intimate is is a good description. Well, how does that how does that translate to live shows then? I mean, because I mean, I guess we should mention you you have a tour coming up in support of this record and obviously you know the type of music you play it lends itself to things like house shows and more that kind of intimate venue but how does it translate live have you played any of these songs live uh beforehand or are they we all sort of new played, for this tour we played a few times we actually had a kind of a sneaky show in december i think even like the week after we finished recording okay we wanted to shoot some live video so we could start kind of promoting that to festival directors and um we only have one i think we kind of released uh fast romantics is on youtube if you dig around a bit but uh yeah so we we learned them for that and uh we've been playing them yeah just a few times though in town and and also we had a really long rehearsal at the burton cummings theater uh two days ago because uh, we were part of this live sound workshop for the women in music. And so oh, cool. for their guinea pigs on the stage so they could do sound for us. And we we ran through everything. <laughs> that was a really good rehearsal to have in a really nice venue. Yeah, it's a, it's a really nice venue for sure. Is that, <laughs> is that I mean, as far as the size of, size of the venue, is that somewhere that you, you guys feel comfortable playing? Or would you rather have the smaller, kind of more intimate venues? Because that, that thing is, I mean, even just looking up from the stage, looking down at the stage, it's so tall it's, it's so high right it, it, so does that it work so for high. your sound do you think it kind of feels intimate there uh because it, it it's all so closed in and and uh right. yeah we did we opened for bobby mcferrin at the jazz fest a few years ago and it was yeah sort of partly terrifying and but really exciting and <laughs> yeah i was a bit of a spaz on stage i'll admit <laughs> well you only get you, you don't get that many chances to play the burn coming theater right so you might as well you might as well you take advantage of it yeah exactly it felt really special and yeah but and which makes it a little more nerve-wracking but but it did yeah. have an intimate feel and uh, i felt like the audience was right there with us and you can see everybody <laughs> oh i bet yeah yeah i mean yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's just a straight up uh, vertical <laughs> seats yeah um so <laughs> this, this is kicking off with a local show right the, the tour yeah this uh yeah we're kicking off the tour we heard it was wise to do one after you got back from tour but um this was the available date so we took it <laughs> so what are the details of the of the show um it's this friday uh there's a seven o'clock show and a 10 o'clock show because we have uh kind of different audiences so um the 10 o'clock one actually knob and tube which are chris and joe from our band they have a a duo well it's actually a trio with Jill Fournier, but Jill can't make it, I don't think. So it's knob tube. Okay. Jill no and Ampersand. Yeah. <laughs> and they have uh these beautiful songs they sing and play. They're so talented on their own and nobody really gets a chance to hear them very often. They don't really play out. I um but Leaf Rapids always makes them play when we go on the road and play a few songs. Cool. We like to feature them. And then uh the second so it'll be knob tube and leaf rapids on the first seven o'clock show and then we kick everyone out for the 10 o'clock show except some people told me they bought tickets for both which is so sweet and that'll be us and then the perpetrators are gonna close the night off at the end and we can drink some beer and party and relax that's kind of cool having ha having you guys as the openers for the, the second show and that, that's yeah. an interesting way of doing it yeah <laughs> we like doing that <laughs> we're, we're old does the set change? I mean, is it a different set? Um, like, do you tailor the set, I guess, for the... Um, I imagine the second one's more of a raucous show, just anyway. I mean, the perpetrators help, right? Is it is it the set tweaked at all, or are you playing essentially the same thing? 
Yeah, I don't know. I guess we'll have a sort of a, uh, what's the word? A reservoir of songs we'll dip into and see what, what, what the crowd is doing. If everyone's dancing, maybe we won't play some of our slower, depressing songs in the second one. And, uh, but we also have a lot of really amazing guests for both. Uh, oh, cool. Nat is going to play cello and JP is going to bring his violin and Bill Western's. Oh, I forgot to mention Bill Western's playing pedal steel on a few songs on the record and he's yeah. playing both sets too. So yeah, we definitely want to feature all of those people. I think the pedal steel adds a lot to the, the stage. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. No, I was going to say, I think that the pedal steel adds a lot to the dreamlike quality of it too. That, that That's an instrument that definitely has that kind of dreamy vibe to it. Yeah. I love the pedal steel. Bill Western plays so beautifully. Well, that's another person who's played with everybody too, right? I mean, he has a crazy resume as well. Yeah, and he's played with Nathan, and he played on a, a couple of our, one or two of our Leaf Rapids ones too. And Cool. So how do people find this record? I mean, by the time this comes out, if someone's listening on the day the episode comes out, the record will have just been released. Um, yeah. It's a podcast, though. Someone could be listening a year from now. What's the best way to find your music just sort of in general? Um, well, I guess the best way would be to go to leafrapids.org. And then that'll point you in all directions. If you like Bandcamp, we're on there. If you, I think it's on every other streaming site. And uh, yeah, and probably not in any record stores because I don't know if those exist anymore. There's a few. There's a few of the stragglers <laughs> that are hanging on, yeah. Well, I mean, you are putting out physical copies of this too, right? Yeah, we have, yeah, we're, we have, uh, we made some vinyl and we made some CDs and we have even some t-shirts, hopefully, and baseball caps, trucker oh, cool. caps, if they get here on time. I'm very last minute, so <laughs> I have my fingers crossed. Do you, do you find that, um, I mean, I'm definitely among the audience of people who, who listen still to physical media. I haven't, I don't know how to use Spotify or any of that stuff. I still records, tape, CDs, but do you, do you feel like the style of music you play lends itself more to people who want physical media because i think there's some genres where that's just out of the question everyone just wants to do streaming but i feel like you know with any kind of um folk americana whatever you want to call it roots music there's a lot of festivals and type, those type of events where there's a lot of sort of um not like markets but a market kind of vibe right where, where people are, are going up and meeting the band and talking and hanging out and do you feel like that the um physical records are still sort of part of your scene that's a really good question. Uh, it changes so drastically. It feels like every time I go on tour, I know in, when we went to Europe, but that was four years ago, five years ago, we were selling more CDs there and okay. we're lugging our vinyl around, although we didn't bring too many because we weren't sure and they're heavy. But uh, yeah, I don't know. And now I feel like even at festivals, the CDs don't really go too much. So I'm going to find out, I guess. We made everything just in case. <laughs> yeah, it's a good strategy for sure. So where, where do you go after Winnipeg, after the hometown show? Where, where are you headed on tour? Yeah, we're going, uh, we play a show um, in Inglis, Manitoba. And then we do Regina, Edmonton, Calgary. Um, and they called it, I think they changed the name to Diamond Valley, uh, Black Diamond. Okay. Yeah, that's a really good show. And then we play again back in Calgary at the Ironwood. And that's it. That's our big tour. Cool. And, um, you know, you mentioned the website earlier. Obviously, that's where people can find all the stuff. Um, what's the best way to sort of follow you? Uh, I mean, is there social media or anything you want to plug that people should follow you on to find out what's going on with the band, um, you know, uh, the various tour stops and things like that? Um, I, th I think I would just encourage everybody to follow and like and subscribe to like all their favorite bands social media things because we're all trying to apply for grants and get into festivals and uh all those numbers seem weird but they actually help as far as just yeah i think that's a nice free thing you can do if you're listening to people's music on on streaming just like and follow all the things and and uh <laughs> yeah, because it, it helps in this weird dystopian future we live in <laughs> to, yeah, to get people shows. And, and... And... Right on. Awesome. Okay, and then I guess the one last thing I wanted to ask you too is uh, what is the, um, I mean, I know it's a song title, but what's the significance of the album title? Why did you choose that as the title of the album? Uh, yeah, Velvet Paintings uh, kind of sounds like a, a collection of weird paintings. And I, my parents actually had these two 
velvet paintings of the crying clown and the sad i mean sorry the, the happy clown and the sad clown above the stairwell going to the basement and they always creeped me out they were so creepy <laughs> and they just kind of stayed in my mind and when i wrote the song uh velvet painting i was kind of they were kind of in my mind and i just thought of the world as this sort of really weird dark creepy place and uh and then yeah it just seemed to suit suit the record and i kind of now i kind of like velvet paintings <laughs> as long as they're not the creepy clowns right <laughs> awesome